Okay, so we have seen uh, some man-made explosions being carried out in on Earth, but uh, much more powerful explosions take place in our galaxy uh, and elsewhere in the universe in other distant galaxies. Uh, there are past supernovae in our own, own Milky Way galaxy, which have been recorded by uh, by amateur astronomers and sky watchers over millennia. Uh, and I refer to the Crab uh, supernova um, uh, of 1054, which were recorded by the uh, Chinese. Now, uh, there is a uh, coincidence that many of the positions of the supernovae um, <clears throat> are um, actually uh, very close or on the galactic plane itself. The galaxy, as you know, is a spiral shaped uh, uh, object uh, with most of the massive stars happening close to the plane of the galaxy. And supernovae uh, take place um, uh, from stars which are heavier than roughly three solar mass uh, or three times the mass of the sun. Uh, and they are found to be. Um, uh, in or near the spiral arms mm -hmm. and stars heavier than eight solar mass um, are thought to lead to a different class of supernovae which we have referred to before um, as a core collapse supernovae. And the reason that they occur uh, so close to the uh, galactic plane is that um, they are uh, in being massive stars they are very young um, uh, massive stars live actually uh, much shorter time than low mass stars and in this time the progenitor star, the parent star, didn't have enough time to move away from their place of birth and the most of the stars are actually born in the galactic plane and so when they exploded after a few million years ago, million years after they were born, they were in fact very close to that. Uh, uh, galactic plane and this blue region is the galactic plane region shown in uh, a plot of right ascension and declination. And the middle region which is there in red are parts of Virgo and um, uh, other clusters of galaxies which are close by Coma cluster uh, and some supernovae are also seen in those, those uh, places but they are uh, very uh, distant supernovae. Um, next slide. Uh, next slide shows different types of supernovae. I, I have referred to earlier uh, thermonuclear supernovae and core collapse supernovae. Uh, they are actually classified by astronomers on the basis of spectrum, optical spectrum recorded at the time of maximum light. And <coughs> um, the primary um, uh, distinctive characteristic between the two classes. Uh, is whether or not you see hydrogen in their spectrum at maximum light. If you don't see any hydrogen, they are um, uh, they were originally classified as one uh, type one um, supernovae. Uh, but as time went on, went on um, the type one supernovae themselves got uh, uh, reclassified into several subclasses. One A. 1Bs and 1Cs, uh, which um, are again uh, distinguished whether or not you see a particular silicon 2 um, absorption line there or not. If you don't see, if you if you do see a uh, if you do see an absorption trough at about 6150 angstroms, you classify this supernova as 1A, and these are the uh, these are the uh, original thermonuclear supernovae, which was uh, originally uh, classified as simply one uh, type one supernovae. They have now been reclassified as one A supernovae. Um, if you do see hydrogen in, uh, in its spectra at maximum light, then uh, they are classified as type twos, and um, type twos were uh, the original classification of the core collapse core, core But later on, from a study of um, positions of um, 1Bs and C supernovae, 
uh, in the types of galaxies that they occur or uh, how close to the spiral arms they are, um, they were also classified as uh, belonging to the core collapse class. Next slide. Okay, so <clears throat> the core collapse supernovae, which we will be concentrating on in this um, in this uh, talk, result from uh, collapse of iron cores inside massive stars of mass usually greater than eight sort of mass. Um, they lead to neutron stars or black holes as compact scalar remnants. Um, uh, a subset of the core collapse supernovae of type 1 Cs, uh, which I have uh, showed uh, in the previous slide just now, have been found in some cases to be associated with long duration gamma ray bursts. Um, for example, um, there was a gamma ray burst called GRB 980425, which took place in 1998, April 25, and it was eventually found to be coincided with, an, uh, with a supernova, which was called Supernova 1990 BW. So the GRBs are often associated with, um, uh, or at least a class of GRBs are associated with uh, a corpulent supernova. Normally, a typical supernova would show a non-relativistic outflow of its outermost layers, as seen by the uh, radio emission, which is of a non-thermal non -thermal nature from the um, supernova. Whereas a GRB outflow is initially uh, highly relativistic, and this is believed to be powered by a separate source, which is separate from the last ray, which is dripping through the star. Uh, it is believed that the GRBs were are actually powered by a central engine, which could be a, um, a fast rotating neutron star or a black hole, um, accreting mass and sending out a jet of um, material or jet of uh, electromagnetic radiation. 